she sort of showed me how to just put everything in a box, get everything to fit. You decided what you're going to keep and figure out a place and, and how to rearrange items so that everything will fit. And I think that's something she talks about in the book, but I didn't quite envision it the same way. So that was helpful. Welcome to Spark Joy, the podcast dedicated to celebrating the Kamari method and the transformative power of surrounding yourself with joy and letting go of all the rest. With your hosts and certified Kamari consultants, Kristen Ivey and Karen Sochi. And now, here's the show. We have a very special guest with us today, a former professional musician. Jennifer Vaughn Estrada currently works as a college instructor in economics. She enjoys reading mysteries and learning about photography. She is passionate about promoting the social, economic, and emotional well-being of multiracial and multi-ethnic individuals. She lives in Southern California with her husband and son. And another reason she is so special is that she is the winner of the Got Joy contest hosted by Netflix Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. She is one of the select few people on this earth who's experienced what it's like to welcome Marie Kondo into their homes to tidy up. Welcome to Spark Joy, Jennifer. Thank you. Welcome, Jennifer. We are so thrilled to have you join us today because you are a part of a very, very select group of people who have actually experienced what it's like to be married by Marie Kondo herself. That's such a huge honor. And Karen and I and other consultants have met Marie Kondo and her team on many occasions. But even as consultants, we're never exposed or have the experience of what it's like to invite Marie herself into her home to conduct an actual lesson. So Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your journey. And let's start with your clutter challenge. What brought you to the contest itself? What inspired you to enter into Netflix, Scott Joy? Well, I had read Marie Kondo's book when it was first coming out in English. And I had tried multiple times to declutter, but life always got in the way. And when I saw that there was the casting call for the TV show, I thought, oh, I'll enter that. But of course, I wasn't uh, asked to be a part of that. And then at some point, my sister found out about the Got Joy contest, and I was able to come up with something special to me to post about. Uh, the instructions were, post a picture of something that sparks joy for you. And I did so, and they liked it, and they just selected me as the winner, and I was thrilled about it. Awesome. And what was that posting? What sparked the most joy for you in your home? So it was actually a 30-year-old journal that I had, my first or second journal when I was a kid. Going through decluttering old journals is, can be kind of depressing for years that weren't the greatest. So when I found that journal, I started laughing because I was a little kid who was writing as if I thought of myself as being grown up and mature. And I'm writing all these, uh, just my thoughts and poems and thinking that they sounded so mature and grown up. <laughs> <laughs> so I enjoyed reading that old journal compared to a lot of the others that just sparked a lot of bad memories. So I decided probably the last day or second to last day of the contest to submit an entry. I wrote a short description of the journal and what it meant to me and why I was keeping it, why it wasn't going into the recycle <laughs> bin with other in the shredder. <laughs> and when I had my interview as a finalist, I was told by the producer that one thing that they really liked was the fact that it was writing. And writing is very important to people like Mari and other writers. 
And so that really spoke to them. And I was glad because I didn't want to just take a snapshot of my coffee or my dog or those kind of posts that I saw a lot on Instagram of people just taking a picture of their morning coffee and saying, this sparks joy. (laughs) I thought I wanted to contribute something more meaningful. That is so interesting because as you were talking, I was thinking like, what would I show? And you're right. It would be something really dramatic or something really super visual since it was being posted on Instagram. But it sounds like you really kind of tapped into what they were really thinking and feeling about this contest. But it also sounds like there was actually more than one part to you winning the interview. What was that all about? So I was initially contacted by the social media manager who informed me that I was a finalist. And then I was put in contact with a KonMari creative producer who did a phone interview to kind of figure out how familiar I was with Marie Kondo and her work. And also, I guess it was just another phase of eliminating certain candidates. And I don't know how many finalists there were, but yes, there was the, the post and then the interview. And so then they notified you? Did they call you? Did they email you? How did you find out that you were actually the winner? Oh, an email, and I'm never going to delete it. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that sparks joy. Right, right. It's not going to be, uh, de- when I declutter my inbox, it, I pass over it every time. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take from beginning to end as far as like the amount of time that elapsed between entering the contest and actually learning that you were the winner? It was a matter of months. I was surprised to be contacted. I was actually teaching and I picked up my phone after I finished my lecture and I thought Instagram was notifying me that the Con Murray account had posted something. And when I clicked on it, it said, oh, you're a finalist. <laughs> so I don't remember driving home that day. I think I flew. <laughs> That's so wild. It sounds like they were also interested in knowing, you know, what you knew about Marie Kondo and about KonMari. And so, and you mentioned that you had tried to do the KonMari method on your own. How far along were you before you actually entered the contest? I had attempted probably about four different times. Clothes were easy. Books, I would always discard a few books and then skip the category generally because my husband likes keeping books. And so Marie Kondo is very big on, you know, just focusing on your own stuff. Sometimes I would decide to get rid of some books that considered mine, but a lot of our books we consider a shared property, common property. So I would skip that category and go to papers. It was a big mess. I had lots of papers from back in being in school. I had papers mixed up with mementos. I had papers from old jobs that I had many years ago. It's a big category and I'm still going through it. And every time I would say, oh, I'm going to restart. So I go close again and then skip books, and then get stuck on papers. (laughs) Interesting. And maybe attempt um, to declutter a miscellaneous uh, kimono category. But I felt like I always had that roadblock. And so when I I entered the contest, I, I wasn't expecting to win, but I was hoping that maybe Marie Kondo could sort of motivate me to continue on to try to finally get it done and not just set it aside and then a year later, start all over again. Wow. You know, this is really interesting because what you just described is, I think, exactly what goes on for people when they decide to reach out to a consultant for help because they've reached a place where they just aren't aren't sure about how to go forward and they want to make sure that they're doing it in a way that's going to actually make the biggest impact. Yes, I think that... Now that I've had somebody come into my home and help guide me and motivate me to move forward, 
I think that it would be nice for anyone else who gets stuck to call a consultant, maybe one time, maybe a whole series of lessons on decluttering to sort of help push yourself forward and get over those little hurdles in certain categories. Yeah, and I love that your wish was actually granted and you officially met Marie Kondo. What was it like that morning before she arrived? And what was that first moment like when she entered your home? So I woke up that morning wishing that I had cleaned more. (laughs) 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 I was not relaxing. I had to actually work that afternoon or I couldn't take uh, the day off. And so trying to prepare for her coming as well as being ready to go to work as soon as she left was a little stressful. Uh, But my husband was a deer and helped me clean up everything. We have a two-year-old, so every single day is (laughs) a challenge as far as regular methods. (laughs) And when we were outside and we were waiting for them to arrive, and it was kind of a funny experience because it's almost as if, is this really going to (laughs) happen? And then when the car parked, they didn't get out for the longest time. Oh, no. (laughs) So the three of us are standing there going, okay, is she going to make an appearance? And she came out with that big smile and she was so friendly and empathetic. That's what really struck me because sometimes whether it's organization or fashion or dieting or anything else, you might read some sort of self-care, self-help book on or seek out some program. Sometimes people are very, they're not empathetic because they, they're saying, okay, I've come up with this method, just follow it and your dreams will come true. Just follow it and all your problems are solved. And not really recognizing that the program's going to be difficult for people. Marie Kondo is not like that. She really empathizes with her clients, I think. Every time I said, oh, you know, my husband disagrees about this and that. And she's like, okay, let's see what, how we can work around this. You know, something that will work for both of you. And every time I mentioned about my son, she's like, me too, because she has those little, little kids. So she understands the struggles we have, hurting with mementos, dealing with family members who might not be so keen on the idea of throwing everything away and all of that. And so that showed in her personality right away, that she wasn't here to yell at me or criticize me or expect me to do the impossible overnight. She was here to help and we were going to take it one step at a time. I'm visualizing this and Marie is in your home and you're kind of getting the pleasantries out of the way, I imagine. And then there's a moment where it's time to get down to business. So what was your first steps? How did you begin in terms of your tidying with Marie? Well, we sat down at the dining room table and she asked me about my decluttering journey, uh, what I had done before. And then when she greeted the house and then we went and through each of the categories, I asked her to do every category. She left it up to me and I said, can we just go through each category and talk about the clothes situation, what am I doing right, what am I doing wrong, go on to books, go on to papers, go on to kimono. And so that's what we did. Uh, She gave me feedback about each category and we sorted my skincare items, we discussed my pantry, we discussed, uh, we sorted uh, my linen closet, we sorted my laundry supplies closet. And she looked at my books, she looked at my papers, and gave me some feedback. So we basically covered the whole method, which I didn't expect to do, given the time limitations. But it was nice because I got sort of some feedback on every part of the journey. 
on not just, oh, we're going to spend all day working on books or papers or something and not necessarily be able to ask her her opinion about some of the categories. It sounds like it was more of a high level overview of all of the categories. Before she got there, had you gotten any instructions on like what to prepare or what she would be doing while she was there? Or was it pretty much just left up to however things went when she arrived? It was left up to me in the sense that the creative producer said, what would you like to work on when she's here? And I said, oh, I'm I'm not sure. I would like feedback on every category. And Marie Kondo said that she had not expected my home to be so well decluttered. I'm not sure exactly how she phrased it, but that was essentially it. I had made a lot of progress. And so when we looked at a category, I first told her what I had done. And then she could evaluate, evaluate how I did and suggest further steps. Oh, that's so great. And so I think it's a little different from the TV show because on the TV show, you have people who weren't familiar with her method and she walks into their homes and they haven't really done anything. I think that's kind of what what was portrayed. Uh, whereas in my case, I've done decluttering and she's sort of offering some advice to help me move forward. Well, it sounds like you really wanted to make the best use of her time there. So that is great. And it sounds like it worked out really well so that, you know, you got some tips on some things that were really kind of tripping you up in the method. And I know we would love to hear about some of the tips that she gave you about each category. So uh, one thing that came up quite a bit was that that I don't tend to crowd things together in the little boxes. So for example, when we were cleaning the laundry supplies, when we were cleaning some of my skincare items and things like that, she was insistent on getting as much stuff in the little boxes as possible. And I had always focused on, well, how can I make this nice and neat? And, oh, I don't have enough room for everything I have. And so she sort of showed me how to just put everything in a box, get everything to fit. You decided what you're going to keep. and figure out a place and and how to rearrange items so that everything will fit. And I think that's something she talks about in the book, but I didn't quite envision it the same way. So that was helpful. And then, of course, uh, she gave me some advice about getting certain kinds of dividers and stands that would help arrange my dishes better. So that mostly some advice on storage or in organizing. That's what we focused on. Did she give you any advice on how to deal with the very, very common issue of things that you own in common with other people in the house that you were talking about earlier, the book situation? She was not there to touch anything of my husband. And so we left the books alone and she would ask like with the clothing, oh, this drawer is yours, this drawer is your husband's. So we didn't really discuss a lot of those items, I don't think. We did tackle some common areas. We looked at, for example, a cabinet in the laundry space and She gave advice about how to store stock items and how to store whatever items are currently in use. I thought that was very helpful in the book. She doesn't talk a lot about, oh, you're buying in bulk (laughs) because that's the only way to live. So you have to have a separate space for all the unopened packages and then you have a space for whatever you're currently using. And I was often storing things together. So, for example, a box of trash bags that was opened, 
would be next to the unopened one. And she's like, oh, separate the unopened things by putting them in another area. And we did the same thing with the linen closet and with my skincare items, things like toothpaste and mouthwash and stuff like that. Figuring out, okay, how can we get everything organized so that you can see, you can look down in the bin and see where everything is. It might not look nice. And that's what I had been going for before. It sparks joy if it looks pretty too, but how do you make toothbrushes look pretty? I'm not sure. (laughs) (laughs) So she focused on get everything organized and in the bin so that you can look at it, you know what you have. And then when you run out of toothbrushes or whatever, then you know to restock. So those were the kind of common items we did address. With the books, her opinion was, we're going to have to leave it, skip it, because that's not something that I was in a position to go through. It really sounds like she stuck to the message then. That's great. Yes. I'd love to hear a little bit more about some of the spiritual aspects of Kamari and how you experienced that with Marie. I feel that I do have a new appreciation for the things I'm disposing of. I don't think of it as, oh, this is stuff that I've got to get rid of. I think more of it as I'm moving on. And, you know, this has served me well previously, and now I no longer need it. And it was just time to move on. And so I wouldn't say that I'm inclined to actually thank the object. But I do feel more gratitude as I'm disposing of things now than I did before I read her book. Awesome. And were there other sentimental items that Marie helped you part ways with? We didn't discuss sentimental items. We worked on a lot of kimono. And I did show her how I was going through a lot of paper, dividing paper, paper, and paper sentimental items. Yeah. (laughs) And she was very encouraging in that regard because I was a little bit embarrassed to show her, oh, I have these boxes full of paper and I'm having a hard time getting through this. (laughs) But she was very understanding. Like, okay, you're in the process of sorting it and do what you need to do to get that done. And you know, you'll finish. That was her kind of, the kind of the attitude she had about it. So I felt better about the sort of midpoint storage. <laughs> when you're decluttering in real life, you can't necessarily do it in all, all in one day. And so having some way of sorting items into boxes, into envelopes, or whatever system you have so that you can come back to it and not have to start all over is a good idea. And I got the impression that she was for whatever helped me get through it. (laughs) Speaking of finishing up here at Spark Joy, we're all about being tidy once and for all by exploring every last item in your home, all five clutter categories. And now that Marie has left the building, you probably had a chance to continue your journey. So we'd love to hear about the plans you have for finishing up your process. And we can talk here real time about how we can support you through that journey. Well, I worked more on papers. I've actually parted with a number of sentimental items. It's been easier this time around to do that. It might be the influence of Marie Kondo coming here herself, but I think that a large part of it was having my son in between because having a child sort of changed how I visualized my ideal life and what I decided was important to keeping because I now thought of things in terms of his future rather than just my own. And I think it's been actually easier to part ways with a lot of sentimental items because I've looked at a lot of things and said, okay, this is 
one thing I did a performance program or an award or something when I was young, but that's not as important to me now because I'm focused more on what is my child going to achieve in the future. So it's been a little easier to part with those old sentimental items, some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like you've really been able to focus on what's most important to you and to your family going forward, which is so much about what Kanmari tells us, you know, that the life-changing aspect is about embracing the person that we want to be and moving toward that. And it sounds like you really got that message. Yes, I'd agree. (laughs) Perfect. And if you are a little bit stuck on paper, we love to talk about paper here on Spark Joy. Episode 45 is dedicated to decluttering your paper and advanced strategies we love to use around really addressing this thing that doesn't have a lot of joy besides those things that are sentimental. And as you've mentioned, those are paper sentimental, not necessarily paper, paper, as you call it. I love that. <laughs> Is that one where you talk about uh, how to get yourself off the mailing list? <laughs> exactly, how to stop the faucet. So we love to really move ourselves forward to really discovering the more pleasant uh, categories, right? the ones that are a little bit more meaningful, like you said, the ones that are shaping your family's legacy and really important to your family. Uh, about the at and bills, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Getting through paper is certainly a joyful moment mm-hmm. for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And since you are a big fan of journals, we definitely want to suggest, Jennifer, that you should join our Spark Joy Club. At the tier two level, you can experience the Tidy Home Joy Journal that is complimentary with the club membership. And we'd like to make you an honorary member today so that you can extend your tidying experience and we can extend the conversation with you and make sure that you're tidying up once and for all and using that motivation that you receive from Marie Kondo to really finish this journey. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's sweet of you. The question, does it spark joy, is a simple one, but not so easy to execute alone. Extend your tidying experience by joining the Spark Joy Club, our online community filled with our clients, fellow listeners, and Kamari enthusiasts ready to support your journey. If you find yourself buried under clothing, stuck on storage, or pointing fingers at untidy housemates or family members, we want to help you finish your tidying journey once and for all. Support the show at the Joy Riser level and receive access to our exclusive virtual community, as well as the Tidy Home Joy Journal, your number one tidying companion. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click on Join the Club to get started. And now back to the show. One of the questions that we ask all of our guests here on Spark Joy, what is your favorite tidying tip or you could share one of your most memorable moments with Marie, what you walked away from this experience of being tidied by the queen of tidy herself. (laughs) Well, actually, I'd like to share a tidying tip. And it's familiar because Marie Kondo advocates it. You two have advocated it. Mm -hmm. And that is starting the journey by visualizing your ideal lifestyle. I don't think a lot of fans, as particularly ones who just saw the TV show, realize how important that step is. When you go and think about what you want to accomplish, that guides your decisions when you're making decisions about what does and doesn't spark joy. And I think the reason why it's difficult to do the tidying (laughs) is that a lot of people skip that step. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't take it seriously when I first tried the KonMari method after reading her book. I saw it as, oh, yeah, that that sounds nice. Uh, Envision your ideal lifestyle. (laughs) But I have a memory of when a little after reading the book, my husband was uh, gone for a conference and I accompanied him and we decided to stay in an Airbnb. 
instead of a hotel. And I had this aha moment. I suddenly realized what my ideal lifestyle was because this Airbnb was clutter free. Mm -hmm. And I realized, oh, this is it. I want to regularly come home to a place that looks like this, where the decor isn't piles of books and toys and things <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I would really advocate that if you know they're interested in the come Mari uh, method, not to skip that step. I know a lot of people that I know had watched a TV show and immediately ran to their bedroom and started going through the clothes. He's like, stop, take a moment to, you know, to think about what it is you want to accomplish. I really think that that's taking that time is worth it in the long run. Uh, I think that hotel room aesthetic is what drives the vision of a lot of people who decide to do Conmari. So I think <laughs> that will be very relatable to a lot of our listeners. And I'm so glad you were able to tie everything back to your vision. And if we have a listener who is a little bit stuck on that area, we definitely have a resource, episode five, where we talk in depth about how to visualize your ideal lifestyle and living environment. Because as you put it so beautifully, Jennifer, it is a really critical step and it is what grounds you when you're struggling with that high level question of does it spark joy? Yeah. So Jennifer, we have to ask, what is sparking the most joy for you at this very moment? I am so joyful and so grateful and so relieved that I got back a biopsy report that was negative for breast cancer. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's amazing. So even though I'm decluttering and making progress with that, that does not compare to my health. And I would definitely say that that's what's sparking joy. The fact that I feel renewed, <laughs> that I can live without that concern, at least immediately with it, maybe in the future, I'll have to face cancer because of family history and things like that. But for now, at least I can rest easy. And that was a big relief. I can only imagine. Well, we are also very grateful for that as well. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. We've loved having you here on Spark Joy. Thank you so much for being so generous and sharing your very special and intimate moment with Marie Kondo herself. And wow, what a journey you've had. And we wish you all the best and look forward to continuing the conversation via the Spark Joy Club. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. So now we want to hear from you. Tell us your burning tidying questions or share stories about how Kanmari has impacted your life. Head over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe and review the show, which helps us reach others along their tidying journeys. To extend your tidying experience, you can join the Spark Joy Club. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click join the club to become a member of the Spark Joy community or join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in and we hope your day sparks joy. Thank you for listening to Spark Joy with your hosts Kristen Ivy of For the Love of Tidy in Chicago and Karen Sochi of The Serene Home in New York City. Spark Joy, the podcast, is not endorsed by or affiliated with Kamari Media Inc. The opinions expressed on this episode represent the views of the co hosts and guests alone and do not represent the corporate position of Kamari Media Inc. or the Kamari Consultant Community.